Here we are. Today's the day. E.E. E. Cummings, Erotica, Channing Tatum, and you. And me. I'm Robin O'Neill. This is me reading stuff. I love you. I'm wearing sweatpants. And today I announce the winners of the Channing Tatum Attempts to Write Poetry Contest. I never really had the official name down for that contest. But you know what I'm talking about. Uh, did I say winners, you ask? Yes, sir, I did. I changed that shit. I added on another winner because I could not help myself. I had almost 70 entries. And to all of you who entered this contest, I truly cannot thank you enough. And I'm so sorry I couldn't let all of you win. Uh, it was so funny. You all embraced the humor and the absurdity of this contest. And by the way, we're all a bunch of weirdos. Anyone listening to this show... <laughs> And for sure anyone who entered this contest is very, very bizarre. I feel like I found my people. That makes me so happy. And um, yes, I couldn't choose, and I didn't want to do a first, second, third, uh, but I do have two winners. I'm going to say their names, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about them and read uh, some of their entries. So here we go. Drum roll, please. Winners are... David Drury of Seattle. Yes, David, you won. And M. E.M. is her name. Mysterious name. Don't even know where she hails from. But those are our two winners. (laughs) And uh, let me start with M. This is the bio she sent me. And I quote every word. Not a New York Times bestselling author. M. worked in the other industries for over a decade before picking up a pen. Read laptop. She enjoys gardening, but not weeding, baking, but not cleaning up, and has finally convinced her longtime boyfriend to marry her. People Magazine never says of M. Here's the quote. M is a master at balancing heart, humor, and plenty of action between the sheets. (laughs) So M, uh, once I said that you guys could enter multiple times, M did something kind of outrageous and kept writing to me as both Channing Tatum and Channing Tatum's wife, Jenna. Jenna used Comic Sans font. That's really all you need to know about that. And um, they were both writing to me. There were haikus. There were tweets. You know, like they copy and pasted, or M copy and pasted fake tweets. One was this insanely brilliant thing that was Joe Manganiello and Channing Tatum tweeting back and forth to each other, trying to figure out if they were feminists. And in Channing's email to me, he started it by saying what, he was, what I would, he was showing me. And then he said, I am sure you will see we get real with our thoughts and whatnot. Which sounded, exa- I mean, she, she really did understand the character, the real life character, I think, of Channing Tatum. So um, the, the, the winner out of all of M's entries is this. It is so mind-blowing to me what she was able to do. One of my favorite writers happens to be Donald Barthelme. I've never said that on this podcast, so I don't know how she wouldn't have known this. Um, M wouldn't have. But uh, just listen to this. I'm going to try to do like a hot girl's voice uh, when I speak like I'm Jenna. I don't know what hot girls sound like really, but let me give it a shot. So here's M's piece. Um, I don't even, it's going to blow your mind. All right. Hi, Robin. This is Jenna Dewan Tatum, and I wanted to join your little club that Channing has been talking about. He thinks it is so cute. Anyway, I actually wrote this a while ago, like 2011, when Chan was getting ready to play Kale in White House Down. Mark Ruffalo sent this thing called Concerning the Bodyguard by Donald Barthelme, and Chan really liked it, but felt it really didn't help his character because it wasn't really sexy or American. So he wanted me to make it more sexy and American. I started, it's just really a lot, and I mean a lot of questions. I only got halfway, and then I just started answering the questions, so I stopped. This is the part I worked on. Love you like a sister, Jenna. P.S. Chan says hey. The title is Concerning the Sexy American Bodyguard. Jenna Dewan Tatum for Channing Tatum for Kale. All right, so this is Robin interjecting again, guys. I'm going to read... Uh, the Barthelme, the original Donald Barthelme um, concerning the bodyguard parts right before I read what M changed the words to. It's sort of confusing, but it's worth it. Trust me. So I'll say, 
I'll use the two different voices. My voice will be Donald Bartholome. Jenna's voice will be that annoying voice I was just doing. All right. So Bartholome's here. Does the bodyguard scream at the woman who irons his shirts, who has inflicted a brown burn on his yellow shirt purchased expensively from Yves Saint Laurent, a great brown burn just over the heart? Does the bodyguard scream at the woman who rips off his shirts, who has inflicted a Mac Ruby Woo red lipstick stain on a shirt purchased from Dillard's? A great Mac Ruby Woo red smear just over the right peck? Barthelme. Does the bodyguard's principal make conversation with the bodyguard as they wait for the light to change in the dull gray Citroen with the second bodyguard who is driving? What is the tone? Does the bodyguard's principal comment on the brown young woman who flock along the boulevard, on the young men, on the traffic? Has the bodyguard ever enjoyed a serious political discussion in his principal? Jenna. Does the bodyguard's hot female boss talk with the bodyguard as they wait for the light to change in the tricked out black Escalade with the second bodyguard who is driving? And are they really good looking also? What is the tone of the music blaring on the radio? Does the bodyguard's hot lady boss comment on the tan hotties hanging out in the corner, on the cut dudes, on the La Cienega Boulevard traffic? Has the bodyguard ever fucking talked about the game or who blew him last night? Bartholme, is the bodyguard fr- frightened by the initials D-I-T? Jenna, is the bodyguard frightened by the sentence, see you next Tuesday? All right, I'm going to skip ahead and read you the last part because I know this is long. This was honestly about eight pages long. Okay, Bartholme, after leaving technical school, in what sort of enterprises did the bodyguard engage before accepting his present post? Has he ever been in jail? For what sort of offense? Has the bodyguard acquired a fondness for his principal? And it goes on and on. Here's Jenna. After leaving technical school, in what sort of enterprises did the bodyguard engage before accepting his present job? Stripping. Has he ever been to jail? One time. For what sort of offense? DUI. Has the bodyguard acquired a fondness for his principal? You better not. Can the bodyguard adduce instances of professional success? $25 million, bitches. How much does pleasing matter? I come first, always. What services does the bodyguard provide for his principal other than the primary one? You used to go down on me more often. Are there services he should not be asked to to perform? Quit asking on the anal already. Is he nevertheless asked from time to time to perform such services? Again with the anal. Birthdays and anniversaries. Does he refuse? After that baby, I will not be giving the ass up often again, dude. Can he refuse? Are there, in addition to the bodyguard's agreed-upon compensation tips, of what size, on what occasions? I don't give a shit about jewelry, so take that ring back and get me a dance studio in the backyard. All right, I hope that makes sense. You kind of have to read uh, Donald Bartholomew's piece to really get that, but my God, it was such a brilliant weaving of many different crazy things. Um... So that's M, the mysterious M. Wonderful job. Congratulations on your winnings. Next up, David Drury. So David, is, I, I, he's a writer in Seattle. He does a million awesome things. That's the thing. I don't know him at all until now, but he's also a writer and performer behind um, this incredible comedic character called Reverend Jeff Breakfast. Uh, he's this hilarious street preacher from, uh, stillborn Oklahoma, stillborn Oklahoma. Yeah, that's right. He's on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook. Um, it's at Jeff breakfast, J E F F breakfast. And he's also a musician in a band called tennis pro from Seattle. There's been a movie featuring them about them, um, called big in Japan. It's like a rock and roll road movie comedy. It's so amazing. So David Drury came in at the last minute. He didn't know who I was. I don't know who told him about the contest. He came in right before midnight with this beauty. It's called I Sing the Booty Electric by Channing Tatum. I sing the booty electric, the bite lip shimmy, the winking head roll, the thrust encrusted cabbage patch. Women gawk, squawk, dampen, but nobody sees me. The longing is all on this side of the pole. I hump the air harder. 
Last night I spooned a dream. Tugging on a braid of hair, I yearned to awaken you so you could check out what was happening in the vector of my cargo shorts. But you rolled off the bed, taking your pillow pet with you. By the time I bridged into a jujitsu windmill, the bed had become a stage. Music, screams, hot sexual beats. The braid I had, be- I had been tugging was a velvet rope, and it awakened only a bucket of confetti, which poured over my chiseled confusion, sticking to the gel in my hair, cascading down the sheer rock face of my pecs and abs, jackknifing off the taut cotton of my spring-loaded package. To certain death, in the parched mouths of hotties below, I winced, if only to avoid another bra injury. Oh, to lay you down on sheets of camo, to nudge you like a horse with the front part of my face, to whistle the final countdown into the small of your back, to make fart noises in the crook behind your knee. Like a good soldier, my tongue would declare war on the terror of your nipples, girl, until I moved to the foxhole and my fingers made the peace sign, and with that peace sign parted your soggy potato chips. So I could clean out your tuna can (laughs) while never breaking eye contact. (laughs) Let's do it like the flowers do. I'll unholster my pistol and put it in your John Stamos and treat you like the chair in my chair routine. (laughs) The one where I usually have to pay for a new chair after. And then, if the mood was right, I'd put a baby in your hair. (laughs) Nobody sees the real me. They see the me of yore, wandering lonely as a co-head over to the sorority courtyard. I'd crush a beer can in my armpit and leave with enough tang to fill a Kia Sorento. The river of cum would have carved a new Grand Canyon. Maybe it carved the first one. Who could ever know? Give me a chance to be yours alone. If it took atomic bombs, I would alter the orbit of my hips to revolve around your face only my dimpled moon around Uranus. Show me your soul. (laughs) I'll do a sweet-ass backflip off it. Give me your hand. I can be faithful. Sit down and lean back, and I will treat you to the breakaway pants of my heart. (laughs) There you go. David Drury, you're a miracle worker. I I don't know how to tell you guys how funny I think this is. And, um... Again, congratulations to our winners. Thank you again to everyone participating. I know this is a long episode, but how could I not uh, read these after all the hard work everyone put into it? (laughs) Um, Please uh, follow David Drury. It's D-A-V-D-R-U-R-Y on Twitter or Jeff Breakfast, at Jeff Breakfast, all over the place. Um, And... Please stay tuned next week. Uh, as long as my body and my health allows me, I will be recording these from remote locations around the world. They will be surprise locations. I can't wait to share that with you. And have yourselves a good weekend. Thank you for dealing with me. I know I've been annoying on uh, social media promoting this contest and trying to get entries. I'll calm down a bit now. You can like me again if I've annoyed the living shit out of you. Trust me, I annoy myself even more. You guys are the best. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.